What's going on YouTube? My name is Eric Sun and I'm a photographer based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about flashes. And I'm gonna be talking to you about the flashes that I use, what I use them for, uh, the pros and cons of them, why I use the ones that I do for the jobs that I do, and hopes that this helps you be have a better understanding of the flashes that you can get, the flashes that are out there, so that if you're in the market to buy a flash, you kind of have an idea of what kind of flash that you're gonna be, that you should be looking for uh, to create the kind of images that you want. Uh, and Something that I want to mention uh, is that one, this video is going to be kind of long, uh, so I'm going to try to make this as organized as possible because there's a lot of information. Uh, but even before diving into flashes, one thing that I want to say is that for any photographer or videographer that's watching this video, uh, or even if you're using your phone or whatever, whatever camera that you're using to create whatever kind of content that you're creating, for you to elevate your craft and elevate your creativity, elevate your images or your videos is understanding how light works. Uh, understanding how light works, how it moves, how it travels, how uh, the distance from your light sources to your subject, uh, how shadows create depth in your images, how to play with both light and both shadows uh, together to create the images that you want. There's, those things are all really important. I'm not really gonna dive deep into the science or whatever, or the technicalities of light itself. I will be talking a little bit here and there as I'm addressing each flash and what I use it for and the types of looks that it can create. But if you wanna learn more about light itself, I suggest that you look on YouTube or look online, uh, watch videos about it, buy some courses, uh, do what you can to learn as much as you can about light because a huge part of our job, I guess, as creators, uh, photographers and videographers is understanding how light works and how to use light to our advantage to create the images that we want. Um, like just for example, if you want really, really harsh, dramatic shadows and harsh lighting, then the type of light that you need uh, is going to matter, right? And if you want a really, really strong light, uh, but you want it to be really, really soft, then you have to kind of understand how you can manipulate light to create that kind of look to light up whatever you're trying to light up. And also, you know, if you're shooting outdoors, indoors, uh, just all these factors. And so a huge benefit of using flash is that you can create basically anywhere. Uh, you can create at night, you can create outdoors, you can create indoors. Um, but just like everybody else, uh, I feel like, just like everybody else, I started using natural light. Uh, one, it's free, it's available pretty much every day, and uh, it creates really beautiful, soft images. Uh, so for me, using natural light is what I started with first, and I started to try to understand how light worked in that way, um, and try to study how, you know, like, why on certain times of day, the shadows are really, really harsh, uh, where the really the outline of you know if a person's walking down the street you see the person's shadow I mean you can clearly see where their head is where their arms are where their legs are just by looking at the shadow and kind of the angle of where the sun is and the direction that they're walking but on an overcast day uh, it's a lot softer like you may not even really be able to see a defined shadow on the sidewalk with the person walking or uh, if you're shooting like you know in the city or stuff like that and it's just really really soft flat light where there's hardly any shadows uh like just understanding why that is and the conditions um will help you a lot in terms of understanding flash uh granted with flash photography you're also going to be needing like accessories like modifiers gels and adapters clamps like all these other things uh so i won't really be digging into that either but just talking about the flash themselves so hopefully you'll enjoy this video but as always if i graze over something really quick or if you want to learn more about something or ask me a question i always respond to every comment so leave that question below and i'll get back to you uh, on that as soon as I can. So without further ado, let's dive into it. And the first flash that I want to introduce are speed lights. Uh, this is a speed light. This is your standard speed light. Uh, this isn't really uh, a really popular brand. I don't re even really, I've never heard of this brand before, but I think I bought this speed light with a kit that it came in. I wasn't actually buying the light. I was buying something else. And this light kind of came in with it. And y'all know I'm a sucker for kits. Uh, so the speed light came in and I've had this light for years. I've used this, I use this light for almost every event 
uh, that I shoot and has never failed me. I really love speed lights because of how portable they are, how light they are. They don't take up a lot of space in your camera bag and they they produce enough light for whatever I'm trying to create. Uh, and for events, I mean, usually when you're shooting like a group, uh, if someone wants to get a group shot, they're not more than like five, five, six feet away from you. Uh, so having this, shooting it up at the ceiling, uh, it will create a really nice soft light on their faces and make them stand out against the background because the light will only travel so far. And so the background is dark, your subjects are well lit, good separation, and it looks really great. Uh, and with these speed lights, uh, as you can see, it comes with this uh, diffusing cap right here that you can take off. Uh, and this just helps diffuse the light a little bit more uh, as it's bouncing around and as you're popping off the flash. Uh, you can kind of change the angle of the flash. Uh, you can point it directly straight on at your subjects. You can do it a little bit angled up. You can even rotate it, right? So you can shoot backwards. Uh, so if you're doing like real estate, for example, you have a white wall behind you, you put this on your camera, you shoot behind you, the wall, the light bounces off the wall, and then it evenly lights up the room. Um, and the way that you attach this light is through this hot shoe mount right here right there you kind of uh put this on so here's my 5d mark IV. you kind of put this on the hot shoe to lock it you kind of twist this part on until it doesn't go anymore it's locked on and then you can kind of move around and it's it's there and it's really awesome because uh for a run and gun environment for events i always leave this on and then i just bring my camera with me and it's very easy for me to adjust the power settings to adjust the camera settings all in one go. I don't really need to like worry about an off-camera flash somewhere else. Uh, I'm just able to take pictures wherever I am uh, and get what I want in the moment. Um, granted, that's what I use this for. I use this mostly for events. You can use speed lights for pretty much any genre that you shoot. You can use it for real estate. I know a lot of real estate photographers put their camera on a tripod like this, speed light, bounce it off a white ceiling, white wall, whatever evens out the light, move on to the next one. Um, you can use this for portraits as well. You can have the same setup for portrait work, or you can put this on a light stand. Uh, these lights are probably one, one of the most versatile lights that I see that I would honestly recommend that every photographer should own, uh, just because of how easy it is. They're relatively cheap. Uh, I mean, they can get really expensive, but they are relatively cheap uh, in terms of just camera gear in general. Um, and there's, they're really reliable. I mean, I've dropped my speed lights a few times. Nothing is really wrong with them. Uh, they've kept going uh, and I love them. I love speed lights. Uh, the only downside to the speed lights that I own is that they all take four AA batteries. So I have two speed lights and after every event, uh, they, they go through batteries fairly quick. Uh, and I really hate just taking out four batteries, throwing away four AA batteries after every event, sometimes in the middle of events, depending on how long the event goes. Uh, and I do prefer uh, having rechargeable batteries. Uh, I think that they're just a lot more sustainable and it's just a lot easier to change out the battery while you're on site. Uh, changing out four AA batteries while you're in the middle of an event takes a lot longer than you would think, uh, especially if you're trying to hold the camera with one hand, you have the speed light open, you know, battery part open, you gotta take out all four, put them in your pocket, take out the four new ones, put the four new ones in, close it, and it does take, it does take more time. Uh, and especially if you're in a fast paced environment, uh, you're gonna definitely miss some shots. So I would prefer just kind of having a rechargeable battery, switching it in and out, only one battery, very quick and you're good to go again. Um, so that's probably the only downfall about the speed lights uh, that, I've run into, um, but other than that, highly would recommend everyone should buy one. You can just go and, and buy all different kinds of speed lights that are out there. Uh, so with that said, the next light that I wanna talk about is the Evolve 200 Pro, uh, which is this one right here, this light. This light is uh, definitely one of my most used lights. I use these lights for pretty much every real estate and architecture gig that I have. Uh, these lights are stronger than a speed light. What I mean by that is that a speed light full power versus this at full power. This definitely emits a lot more light, uh, even though if you compare the sizes of these, they're both relatively about the same size. Um, 
if you can see that they're both pretty much kind of about the same size uh, but this does emit more power and which is really helpful for a lot for bigger rooms or for darker rooms um, they just I've never had a problem using these I'm able to change them change the the power outage of these lights and I'm able to accomplish and get the shots that I want without really running into any issues or having to up uh, my ISO or change my camera settings. This just emits enough light for that. Uh, and with this light, uh, let me kind of put the battery in so you guys can see. And this has a rechargeable battery. This is the battery brick right here. Uh, it's really, I mean, it charges, it recharges pretty quick. I, I really appreciate that, um, but I put it in. It locks in place, boom, I turn it on, and here's the back screen. Sorry that the back screen, uh, this thing has gone through a lot, so you can see kind of a, the screen is kind of messed up right here. But this is basically what the back looks like with all the settings. You have a dial, uh, dial over here, you have all your buttons, you have your flash uh, thing right here. There you go. And then here's your actual screen that tells you uh, the channel it's on, the mode that it's in, the battery level, and the group, which I'll talk a little bit more about that later. The group and significance of that, the power of the flash. And you can uh, change this uh, all the way from, you know, going to 1 one twenty eighth or 1, sorry, 1 two fifty sixth, all the way to 1 over 1, which is full power. Uh, and I don't know if you can tell right here is that there's this kind of groove that dips in uh, and so the flash part itself extends up past the cover right here uh, and so the complaint I have isn't necessarily that the flash part is not protected but is more so that if uh, sometimes where you're shooting the flash comes out on the sides as well not just the top but also the sides just through this whole part and you can actually see the lines of the flash of these corners right here these edges in your shot uh, and i find that super annoying i don't really know why they designed this that way i mean besides the fact that it looks kind of cool i guess uh, but it is really annoying uh, especially when you're working in post and you want a really even light um, but most of the times it's, you know, it only happens every once in a while. Most of the times I shoot this like straight up or I shoot it behind me so that it's bouncing off of something so that all the light is nicely diffused and is really big and is really, and is lighting up the whole space quite evenly. Um, but what comes with this light uh, is, was basically in this case, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this or if things are gonna start falling, but in this case right here, you can see that there's the battery charger part right here. Uh, there's the light bulb right here. We can actually change the head of this flash with using this. Here's the piece that you can screw onto your flash that you can put on a speed light. And then there's the cable, there's the battery charger cable in here. So this is what came, this is what came with this Evolve 200. Um, and uh, I don't actually really change the head part out too much, uh, mostly because this is uh, a bare bulb. So let me actually change this out for you so you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, but these are the accessories that you get with it, which I feel like is really, really great. Um, so here's the, uh, sorry, my dog's hair. Here's the adapter part for it as you can see it has this is the back this is how it connects there's a tightening and a loosening part right here uh, and so the bare bulb goes in there uh, and so I'm gonna put this on okay that's usually a lot easier okay I'm gonna put this on like that boom and then take out the bare bulb and then kind of put it in like this squeeze it down boom there you go that's what it looks like uh, so if you just switch it out, this is what it looks like. Uh, and there, there are adapters to this, to where you can have two of these connected together uh, to create uh, a really powerful light if you really need that, uh, which also uses these bulbs. Um, and yeah, I mean, just the fact that you have this uh, option to change out the lights if you want, I feel like is super helpful. Uh, and you can, there's different modifiers you can put on this too to help kind of shape the light that you want. Uh, so, I mean, again, you can use this light for pretty much any genre as well. Uh, it's just not as versatile as a speed light to, or as easily portable as a speed light, but you can put it on a light stand and then you can shoot this up towards the ceiling or you can, uh, 
put this on a light stand and then put a modifier on it so it can become a portrait light or even for real estate or anything like that. I do not use these for uh, events just because it's not as versatile and it's not as easily easy to carry. The speed light is my go-to always for events. I don't use any other lights uh, for it unless there's like a step and repeat where I'm basically just just there being stationary. I'm not really moving around, which rarely happens. Um, so yeah, I, I would recommend these lights as well. Uh, this light I feel like is really powerful. Granted, this is a lot more expensive than a speed light, um, than your average speed light cost, uh, but I would say that it is worth it because of the light output, the quality of light, and I mean, I have two of these. I use these all the time for all of my real estate and all of my architecture work, um, and they have never failed me. But to mention another downside of this though, is that even though these are pricier, they are not as durable. Uh, I would say I'm on my second pair of these lights uh, because I use these that often, um, but there are some times where I accidentally knock them over or they accidentally drop or they accidentally hit something and they break. Uh, most of it will work uh, in terms of like, uh, sometimes the, okay, so I take that back. If it doesn't work, it just won't work. But one time I dropped it or I nicked a corner and it kind of hit a corner really hard and this on and off switch, something inside of it broke and it wouldn't actually turn on. Another time is that uh, I hit something else and the battery lock right here didn't work. It wouldn't keep the battery locked in. Uh, so even if I held it in and tried to use it, there was like a pin or a connection there that was not aligned. Uh, and so there wouldn't be a consistent power that would come through. So a lot of the times I would have to kind of adjust the light to make the light go off and turn on um, so that's something to kind of keep in mind these are a little cheap so be a little bit more careful with these but I still would recommend them because they are great quality lights um, just kind of let me, let me put this back <sighs> okay and the last light that I kind of want to introduce to you guys uh, or talk about is the biggest light that I own it is the most powerful light that I own and it is this sucker right here this is the flashpoint explorer 600 pro uh, this is a mono light this is the this is a heavy beast of a light as you guys can tell uh, and it is the light that I use for pretty much any portrait work and I always bring with me on architecture and architecture work. Uh, and so I have this light because this light is powerful enough to really combat the sun uh, if I'm shooting outdoors. Uh, whereas if I'm, you know, shooting in the middle of the day, uh, I bring this out, turn this on all the way up to full power. It is more than enough light to still light up my subjects. Um, and there are sometimes, you know, when I did buy these lights where I was doing portrait work outside in the middle of the sun, just because that was just my client's availability. But also for architecture, uh, a lot of the spaces are really big. I mean, I shot a corporate space, corporate office space uh, the other day, and some of the rooms were so big that the other, the Speedlight and the Evolve 200 Pro just would not cut it. I had to bring out one of these things, and it evenly lit up uh, a big chunk of the room. Uh, I had to use, uh, I did use this light, uh, to light up the other parts of the room uh, at full power, but this one, the, the Explorer 600 Pro is where it's at. I mean, this is like, almost like this is like boss level, you know? Like the other ones are like, yeah, okay, they're good, they work, uh, but this is like boss level. This will light up anything that I pretty much need. Um, to give you a kind of a, a tour of the features of this light is that there's a built-in handle right here, as you can see. Uh, and then you can kind of tighten it. This goes on your light stand like this. There's a hole right here. I don't know if, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, see that, but there's a hole right here where you can put in like your modifiers, your umbrellas. Uh, you just slide that in uh, and it covers the bulb right here. This is uh, a cap that protects the bulb and you can see this, this light bulb is so huge. It's so huge. It's also so expensive to replace, um, but it is huge uh, and it just it just works super well. I mean, I really love uh, this light. There, This light is loud too. Um, when I was buying this and I was kind of shopping around to see what kind of lights I would get, uh, there were a few questions of people asking, because of the amount of output that this light can create, can you use this for video? Uh, and in my opinion, 
uh, it is no because the fan is super loud. Uh, and I'll kind of demonstrate that in a little bit, but this is what it looks like when you turn it on. Uh, and so as you can see, it's a light up LED screen, which is really good if you were to use it during the, um, during the middle of the day where it can light up where you can see it. Here's all your buttons and your menus. Here's your dial about the flash power and everything you change like that. Uh, again, here's the LCD screen. It talks about the mode, battery life, group, flash power, and has all these other things. Um, so right here is the modeling light. Uh, and this is the video part that I was talking about that people were asking. So if I turn this on, it's gonna be really bright. Turn this on. So this is really bright uh, and you can also change how bright that this gets. So this is full power modeling light. Uh, and so a modeling light is really great and uh, the Evolve 200 Pro has this as well. But the modeling light is really great because a lot of times when you're shooting in a studio setting, um, this is just really dark. You turn off all the ambient light. You don't want that anymore. Let me just turn this off. You don't, you know, want any ambient light. The lighted are like those fluorescent tubes, which like gives like a kind of a green cast. You don't want any of those in your shots. You cut it all out uh, or you turn them off. Having a modeling light definitely is helpful to one, light up your subject, uh, but also to give you enough light for your camera to focus on your subject too. Because if it's too dark, your camera's gonna have issues focusing, but having this on is going to help that a lot. And uh, so when people are asking, can you use this for video? My answer is no, because I don't know if you can hear this. I'm gonna turn this all the way up so you can kind of hear it. You hear that fan. So the fan, sorry about that brightness, but the fan is really loud and it's not something that I would ever recommend using during a video. The lights that I have lighting me right now are actual video LED continuous lights. Uh, that's what they're made for. This is made for flash. Um, and a big thing about flash, uh, why I choose to use flash instead of continuous lights is that flash lights uh in my experience are able are stronger than continuous lights they can output a lot more power um one they're most of them are battery powered uh to where i don't need to have uh, external power so i can shoot anywhere um i don't need to worry about having an outlet with me or anything like that or a power bank or anything and uh, so that's why I like flashes, uh, but with flashes this big, they all come with the modeling light, so you'll all have that option. Um, but these lights are the most expensive lights that I own, um, and I do have two of these as well, uh, for the purpose of using multiple lights to create multiple looks. Um, and oh, one thing about these lights too, before I forget, is that I don't know if you can see, but it does have a Bowens mount, uh, which means that the modifiers that you use, as long as they have a Bowens mount, you can use a Bowens, any of those modifiers on this type of light. And for me, all the modifiers I have are all Bowens mounts. Uh, so they all have like the three pronged, you kind of twist to lock it and they all work like that. So I can use all the modifiers that I have uh, I can just keep the same lights, use all the different modifiers. I don't have to buy multiple lights to match multiple modifiers. So that is the general overview of the lights that I use. Um, and I did say that there's gonna be a lot of information in there, which I feel like that there was. Uh, but the last part of this video is me talking about the light, uh, I guess, family. Um, so I don't know if you can tell, but most of my big lights are Flashpoint Godox. And so I am in the Flashpoint Godox family. And what that means is that when I use my Canon camera, I need a remote to send a signal to my flashes so that every time I take a picture, the flashes and the shutter are in sync. So I capture the image that I want. And by doing so, I have, I bought this. This is a Flashpoint R2 Pro trigger. Uh, and this is the trigger that controls these lights. So this is all in the same family. This is like, I think a 2.4 gigahertz uh, frequency. Uh, and so on here, you can see that it's really, it's got a lot of buttons. It's got a really big screen. Don't be intimidated. It's completely fine. It's very, it's fairly easy to use. Um, you can see all the groups here. So on the lights them, themselves, uh, I was telling you that there were groups. Uh, and so the benefit of having groups is, let me kind of turn these lights on for you. The benefit of having these groups. So this is, as you can see, this is a group, group B. 
right? It's on channel one, group B. So what that means is that any light that is on channel one, group B, I can change from this remote. Uh, so if you look on the screen right here, uh, trying to get away from the reflections, there is a channel, all of these are on channel one, and there's group, uh, group A, B, and C. So let's say, uh, let me show you this. So if I say I wanted to change this light's power to, I don't know, uh, like one half, right? Then what I would do is that I would change this to one half right here. And I can do that all from my remote. I don't need to actually walk towards the light uh, to change it, it'll change from this remote. And then I take the picture, boom, and it's good to go. And if I wanted to, and if I assign multiple lights to group B, then what I would be able to do is that I can change all of the lights power just from this remote changing that group. Uh, and so that is the beauty of using these, uh, using this remote uh, on your camera is so that you can control your lights. So if, you sh if you're shooting a really, uh, complex lighting system like or you if you have like three lights or four light five light system five light setup uh then you don't actually have to walk around to each light changing the power changing the you know options on it or the settings on the light you can all do that from this trigger uh or sorry from this remote on your camera without ever having to actually move and so this remote actually communicates quite a bit to your camera uh not only does it control the flash powers uh it also is like a central hub where it com communicates with your flashes uh but it also communicates the the temperature the color temperature of your flashes it uh controls the color temperature of your images uh and so i have this adapter right here uh because uh, a known issue before with Canon cameras, at least with my experience, is that this would make the uh, color temps of my images a lot warmer than they should be. Because uh, there was some miscommunication happening. So I have this adapter right here that's a single pin so that it wouldn't uh, have that issue so I don't have to manually change every photo uh, in post and changing the color temperature of my images that way. So um, yeah, so I mean, you're able to, do something on here as well called high speed sync, which uh, is a whole nother topic, but just to be really brief and not to make this video that much longer, high speed sync is the fastest sync speed that your camera can handle uh, with like how fast the flash can go before it starts, you start seeing that shutter kind of block your uh, image. Uh, and it's easier for me to show you. Uh, so let me actually, uh, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna actually put this thing on right here. Uh, okay, and so I am shooting this. I'm shooting this as on my 5D Mark IV. I have my 14 to 24. I'm just gonna be shooting some parts of my room. Don't judge me, it's dirty. Uh, but this, I'm gonna be using uh, this Evolve 2 right here. All right, so I'm gonna put this kind of behind me. I'm gonna kind of angle it like this. So I'm at 50 shutter right here. And all right, so that's what that image, is, image looks like with 50 shutter. Um, let me change this. All right, so now I and I'm shooting at f8 ISO 320. Now I'm at one. I'm at 125 shutter speed. All right, there we go. And now I'm at 200 shutter speed. All right, there we go. And then now I'm at 640 shutter speed. And so and this is 320 shutter speed. So you can kind of see on here, this is 400. So you can kind of see that with the higher the shutter speed, it's, you can actually see the shutter itself uh, being a problem where the shutter and the light do not, are not synced enough. And so uh, the most, the max uh, speed that I can shoot with, with an off-camera flash on this camera is generally 200. 200th of a second for flash where the shutter itself doesn't kind of block uh, anything. Once I go above 200 though, you can start seeing a black line, that black line. So that is something that, that does happen with it. So each camera does have its own limits in terms of the 
the speed of the shutter. But most of the time, one over 200, at least for me, is more than enough, especially if you're posing with somebody. If, I mean, if you're working with on real estate, nothing is moving. You don't need to worry about motion blur. If you're shooting, uh, photographing a person, uh, you don't really need to worry about that too because they're usually posing. Uh, and if they are moving too fast, then I would let them know, it's like, hey, try to move a little bit slower and then just go from there, you know? So it's not really an issue, but this remote, uh, so depending on the family, flash family that you're in, you should get, uh, I would I would personally recommend that you're getting your flashes kind of all in the same family, getting a remote that controls all those flashes. Um, and yeah, and then you have the ability to really be super creative and have complete control over the lighting of your situation, you know, and of your photo and of your video, what have you. Uh, mostly photo, because these are all flashes. For video, it's a little bit different, um, but yeah. So that is a general overview of the flashes that I own, uh, what they can do. Uh, and I would highly recommend that anybody that is interested in using off-camera flash, that you definitely study light, You that you buy a speed light, you use that as much as possible. Uh, try to figure out the different looks that you can get from it. And uh, also like think about getting modifiers. You know, the more that you understand the rules of light and how light moves, uh, the more that will help you be better informed on the types of tools that you need and the types of lights that you need to create the look that you want. There's so many things that you can do with these lights, but the fact that you're able to have an understanding of the kind of look that you want and the tools to help you create that look, I feel like you're gonna do great. You know, everything else just comes, uh, everything else is, all the other accessories that comes with Flash is to basically help you solve a problem. You know, because uh, there are grids, there are other types of modifiers, like there's square, rectangle, circles, there's umbrellas, there's shoot through umbrellas, there's uh, silver reflectors, there's just all these things that you can use uh, to help solve the problem of like, hey, I want this, I don't want this light to spill over the whole background. I want it to be very precise and I want it to only be on my subject. And there are grids for that. Uh, and there also depends on the size of the modifier and the size of the light that you're getting. Uh, so just again, like I know this is a lot of information, uh, but I feel like I would be doing y'all a disservice if I just talked about flash without talking about the application of them. Um, I feel like, especially to help you be better informed to know what these flashes can do uh, and to know the highest power and the lowest power outputs uh, of them and what you can use to adapt them and modify these, these lights is super important. Uh, but Again, um, I'm probably going to be doing some videos showing these flashes in use, in action, during a shoot, and how I actually use them to kind of give you a better understanding. I know words can only do so much. Uh, since we're kind of all in the visual arts field, I think visually communicating with you would be a lot better. Um, but just to give a brief general overview of these lights, I love these lights, I use them all the time. Uh, here's some images I'm gonna throw up so that you can see uh, what I've been able to create with these lights, and I'll also write down my camera settings as well as my the type of flash that I used. Um, I'll look to see if the metadata on my images has the power, the flash power on them. I don't think it does, but if it does, I'll include that as well. Um, but I have all the settings for you and uh, yeah, and then uh, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you have any comments. Let me know what your favorite light system is. If you use these, uh, what your pros and cons are the lights that you use. Are you a flash or are you a continuous light uh, person or photographer? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thanks so much for watching this long video. Uh, I'll be back with another video soon. So please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.